Hey guys, it's Grant with the AMZ Affiliate Bootcamp, and a massive congratulations to all of you who are currently watching this video right now, because that means that you've come a long way. You've made it all the way to module four, and you've learned from scratch the business model of an Amazon affiliate website. You've learned how affiliates work, how uh, keyword research works, competition research, outsourcing content, all kinds of good stuff. All of which has set the foundation for this module, which is launching your site. So in this lesson, we'll be talking about how to choose your domain name for your new website. And basically a domain name is a string of text and characters that go in the address bar of your browser. It's the thing that people type in on Chrome or Firefox or whatever that's dot 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 com. So how should you choose your domain name? Well, first off, you should always go for a dot com domain name. Although sometimes .io is super trendy nowadays, but no, go for .com. And although there are 500 plus domain extensions, it's still the most popular and universally known, even for the average person. Companies who start with .net, .org, or .io, or .me, or whatever, eventually have to pay thousands or more to usually switch over to the .com version later. So just stick with the .com from the beginning. You can also check for the domain name availability at namecheap.com. Second, make it brandable and relevant. There was a time when using exact match domain names can give you a huge ranking advantage over branded ones, but that's no longer the case. So for example, bestpuppydogtrainingvideo.com won't rank any better for best puppy dog video training searches, right? So when we start a site, we want it to, to eventually be the ultimate resource in this niche. We want to build a brand. That being said, don't go completely uh, unintuitively branded like amazon.com or zappos.com or buffer.com because those names are kind of hard to understand just by the name and usually require a huge investment to, to do the marketing to grow the brand awareness. So throw in possibly a relevant keyword or some kind of supplementary word that helps people understand what your site's actually about, but just don't focus on doing an exact max, match keyword. When someone hears your domain name for the first time, they should be able to instantly and accurately guess the general topic of your site. So some good domain names that we like a lot are, uh, you know, we're biased, but cloudliving.com, thinkyourskin.com, nerdfitness.com, zenhabits.com, ecommercefuel.com. These are just some initial examples, but for each of them, you can get a pretty good idea about the general topic of each. Number three, shorter is better. Short names are easy to type and easy to remember. They also look better on logos, business cards, and advertising. Usually two word domain names are the best, never go longer than three. Uh, the top 100,000 websites on average have nine characters in their donate domain name, just kind of as a point of reference. So again, keep it short and concise and people will also have an easier time typing it in the address bar. Number four, make sure it passes the radio test. When you say your website on the radio, make sure the listeners can find it or spell it correctly on their first try. This means avoiding hyphens, numbers, acronyms, or confusing sounds as that it'll cause a lot of confusion and make it difficult for people to find your website. It's just a good rule of thumb even if you don't actually go on the radio. Number five, avoid trademarked terms. It's a mistake that isn't made too often but can kill a great domain name and a great website when it goes against the law and the trademark owner uh, can come after you and sue you or force your domain to close. So to be sure you're not infringing on anyone's trademark with your site's name, uh, unless you're using very common words, visit the United States Patent and Trademark Office, which is USPTO.gov, and you can search before you buy. Lastly, check for availability on social networks. So before you actually register your domain name, it's a good idea to check social networks to see if there's something already existing for the same name. To keep your site name constant and to build your brand, you want a name that's readily available at facebook.com slash your new no. So for example, at facebook.com slash your domain or twitter.com slash your domain. Uh, and go ahead and secure them as well if they're all available. A really great tool to check all of this uh, is to go to nonem.com. That's K-N-O-W-N-E-M.com. So I know some of you guys probably aren't super creative. I know I'm not. I always have a terrible time with names of businesses and books and whatnot. So if you're stuck, try these domain name generators. It's kind of fun. Uh, and they'll give you some initial ideas. So if you're struggling to find ideas for your domain name, go to namemesh.com, panabee.com, bustaname.com, and you can play around with these different tools and it'll give you some great ideas or at least initial starting points.
Awesome. So now you've decided on your domain name, hopefully. So where do you actually buy it? Some people can spend thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on crazy domain names, but definitely not a good fit for what we're doing. So after you decide on a great domain name, it's time to go ahead and claim it for your own. Our favorite and recommended domain name registrar is namecheap.com. And you can just go there and complete the registration process in about five minutes. And it's cheap and fast as well. So next up, we're on to the next lesson. Please make sure to have actually bought your domain name before continuing on. And we can continue on building and launching your new site.